You're listening to Puma Podcast. A recent study by Swiss Re, a leading insurance firm, found that the Philippines and the U.S. sustain the most economic losses due to climate change. The U.S. loses nearly $100 billion, or 0.4% of its GDP each year, due to weather perils. The Philippines, meanwhile, loses $12 billion, or 3% of our GDP. Both countries are at risk of losing even more, as hazardous weather becomes more frequent and perilous. So when you land the happen, the big waves, the three big waves, napunta sa amin. Actually, me and my family went to a convention center, but that convention convention center was destroyed. So it's like a miracle that all of the people that were there survived. So our house wasn't really destroyed, but the roof was gone. But the houses in front of us, beside us, were all destroyed. Our barangay was full of... It's like the ocean gave all the, the trashes and garbages in our barangay. When, when I went back like a month after, it was still there. Those garbages and trashes, there, it was still there. And I can't recognize our barangay anymore. And after that, families from our barangay still haven't recovered. So all of us were living in this like tar- trapal or tarpaulin. Tapos ano lang, parang naka, nakasabit lang. In this episode, we revisit a conversation I had with three young Filipinas living on the front lines of climate disaster who have decided to take matters into their own hands. Up until now, our house is still like in ruins, so we still haven't recovered yet from the typhoon. And my father, before, uh, he was a fisherman, but after the Yolanda, like he can't catch any fish anymore. That's the the farm. It was destroyed, and it took years, I think, for our for our co barangays to build. To farm again. I'm Bella Perez Rubio, Puma Podcast, and you're listening to Teka Teka News. So my name is Geraldine Lucero. Po. I am 18 years old, and I studied at Agbanawag National High School from Rizal University. Geraldine is one of 18 Filipino students taking up renewable energy engineering in China. It's a three-year scholarship program at Jiuquan Vocational Technical College in Gansu Province. I was interested po because ang nakikita ko po kasi uh, sa uh, bayan namin kapag na- naaluhan po ng mga disasters is talagang sobrang laki po ng damage niya na hindi lang po sa mga kabuhayan, andun din po yung sa mga bahay, ganun. As a youth po na nakikita yung gano'n na. So generation po na climate change na po yung nasa mundo natin. Gusto ko naman po na tumulong naman po sa environment na kahit pa paano po is maibsan po yung nangyayari po dito sa mundo natin. Ano, lala na po sa may town ko kasi yun nga po yung pinaka main na, na kabuhayan po is pagsasaka. And kapag nabagyo po is talagang nasisira po talaga lahat. But what is a renewable energy engineer exactly? Here's Bianca Incarnacion, another student working to earn that degree. She's a Tacloban City resident and a graduate of Leyte National High School. You heard her recounting her experience of Typhoon Yolanda, internationally known as Haiyan, at the top of this episode. In our world, we utilize non-renewable energy and it is damaging both environmentally and to our people because it emits carbon emissions. So what renewable energy engineers do is to, is to make a solution. Since renewable energy can only emit low to non-carbon emissions, we can contribute to our environment and also to our people. Here's Geraldine Lucero of Nueva Ecija again. When we finish this course, um, there's actually a lot of uh, majors Since we are taking different majors, we can be engineers for wind turbines or solars and hydro. 
Nung wala pong kuryente, narinig ko po na sa kapitbahay namin is may solar. Uy, ibig sabihin ng solar na ay ito lang kuryente is may ilaw sila, may kuryente sila, gano'n. So, I want to give my family those privilege na kahit walang kuryente is magiging maayos pa rin yung buhay nila dun sa bahay. Kasi sobrang init po talaga sa amin. And, matanda na po yung parents ko. So, gusto ko na uh, ma- hindi po sila mahirapan sa ganong klima. And then, nung narinig ko po na may ganitong offer po is I grab this opportunity po na uh, instead of giving my family that comfort, why not contribute to make everyone maranasan po? We hear the story behind the scholarship program after a quick break. My name is Xiao Jun Wang. I'm from、uh, Shenzhen Province, which is actually a very, very cold, heavy place、uh, in China.、Uh, I moved to the Philippines in 2018. And before that, I was already working on climate change, working on environmental protection for almost 20 years. Xiao Jun Wang founded People of Asia for Climate Solutions, a Manila based climate advocacy group, spearheading the scholarship program. The reason I moved to the Philippines was because I worked on climate change and I came from a very coal heavy background. So I knew a lot about coal pollution. I knew a lot about climate change crisis, but I had not really experienced real climate crisis. So when I moved to the Philippines, the typhoons just hit me right there. And also, there was sea level rising. And even with a minor storm,、um, Metro Manila would get flooded, right? And I felt the injustice caused by climate change even more. So it hurt me more. This is the first group of students to travel to China under the scholarship program. They will take up 18 of the 20 slots allocated for non Chinese students by the Jiuquan Vocational Technical College each year. As soon as I noticed the opportunity to build the new generation of renewable energy engineers in China, I wanted them to give the opportunity to our students here in the Philippines. And especially this year, I mean, like, No better time to tell the story about climate change than 2023 because it is the 10th anniversary of、uh, Typhoon Yolanda or Typhoon Haiyan, right? So I think we call our program From Climate Victims to Climate Victors. Vianca was one of two students I spoke to who graduated from Leyte National High School in Tacloban City. The other was Josie Roda. Another Yolanda survivor taking up renewable energy engineering in China. They were both just seven or eight years old when Yolanda ravaged their city, but they remember it as if it was yesterday. Here's Josie. Day before Yolanda, po,、um, it is very sunny, po, and、um, super chill po ng weather nung. And then, pag kinabukasan po,、um, sobrang lakas po talaga. And then. Yung bahay po namin is malayo po sa dagat pero yung tubig po is pumasok po talaga sa bahay namin and then yung hangin po talaga yung malakas like yung yung puno nila is napunta sa sa roof namin we really don't know what is storm surge so we didn't expect na may malakas yung impact na、yes, sa mga bag、uh, waves、yes. and then unprepared po talaga yung mga tao nyo To this day, Yolanda remains one of the strongest storms ever recorded. When Xiao Jun Wang traveled to Tacloban years later, he could still see remnants of disaster. I visited Tacloban as well, and I could really experience it. I had goosebumps when I was there. But I could really still feel so much had to be done because the recovery had only started. Let's just to say, in the worst scenario, next time when there is another typhoon, at least people will have solar power to immediately charge their phones. They don't have to, you know, like rely on the grid to be reconnected. They don't have to send a ship to another bigger island to import diesel, right? That's just ridiculous for for you to 
imports fossil fuels, burn those fossil fuels, make climate change worse, and then bring around more typhoons, right? So that's what we call a vicious circle. And that was today's episode of Teca Teca News. Again, I'm Bella Perez Rubio. This episode was edited by Freddy Blanco. Our executive producer is Jill Caro, and our senior news editor is Veronica Uy. Don't forget to follow Teca Teca News on your favorite podcast app, or listen to us for free on YouTube. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you like this episode, please take the time to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for listening.